you know, I wasn't sure it was going to work. We're like, live. Oh, okay. So now, you can't, you can't see yourself. Well, wait, now it turned to the right orientation, but I only see like half my face. So it's fine. I mean, and I can't, I can only see like your nose up too. <laughs> I would well, love that's to. good. Well, I just looked on our Facebook page and it's fine. Okay, fine. Then I'm just going to talk and. And we'll, okay. we'll, we'll figure it out. You guys, welcome to. Oh, I can see it now. The disaster I can see it now on the Facebook page. Okay. What? Yeah. Yes. But don't, but don't look at the page. Look at us. I'm just, I'm just pulling out yeah. my notes of my top 10. Okay. Well, next time we'll practice, you guys. Um, we're using new technology, new to us. You can see we're branded. Wait, which side? This side. Hold on. No, I can't see anything. Nope, nope there it is. There's our branding <laughs> right there. There's our Stinger logo. Stinger Universe. Shannon and Phaedra from Stinger Universe. Um, our our motto is we'll get it together eventually. Okay. <laughs> we will get it together eventually. But we're working um, on it. Yeah. So this is Be Live. That's the tool that we're using today. And we will be using it in the future, but we will be much better at it than this. I mean, literally, like I bought it two hours ago and now we're broadcasting. So <laughs> I hope you guys will cut us some slack. But yeah, I did. And I can't really see anything. I can see <laughs> half your face. And like I, I see like from my chin to my chest in the window. I don't know what is happening. But uh, if you guys see me, OK, that's all that matters. You want to turn, can you turn your phone? The orientation of your, oh. No, I can't because I have it on a tripod right now and I can't really. Well, maybe. Would that, I think that would screw, I'm afraid that's going to screw everything up. It just, might. Let's just it go. It might. It's okay. Okay. All right. Um, hey, that's us. We're just keeping it real for you guys. Okay. <laughs> I have a big yeah, corner well, over my just, head. We just kind of, like I said, like Phaedra said, actually, we're just winging this. We decided to jump on and talk to you guys about the best things we've watched in 2018. And um, after doing a great deal of research and making a list out of magic marker. Wow. You I came up, you got I came up with my drafty. list. Uh, uh, no, it's basically <laughs> like old paper and magic marker. But what we decided to do was talk about what we think are the, let's just call it the 10 best of 2018. And um, I mean, I literally about 15 minutes ago sat down to create my list because that's, I'm an off the cuff kind of person. And I think some of my choices are going to surprise you, Shannon. Really? And, and they may also surprise some of our viewers before that. Hang on. I'm going to, um, I want to share our broadcast. Oh, okay. I'll do that too. That's a good Just idea. Make sure other people are watching. Let's see. Oh, you know, I think I already shared it once, but it's fine. You can't share too much. Let's see. We are live. Let's see if we can share. Here we go. Share. Oh, I don't like the way I don't like the screen cap it took of me. My eyes were like this. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, but anyway, we didn't really talk about any rules at all. And as I sat down to write the list, I thought we probably should have talked about some rules. So in my head, what, what we said was any piece of entertainment content, that was what we were including on this list. So it could be a movie that we streamed, a TV show that we watched, or a movie that we saw. And I tried to... I'm going to admit that that there are going to be some things that maybe weren't created or released in 2018, but they yeah. were me in 2018. Right. And when I went through my list, it's I so I have ten things, and it actually came up. I did five TV shows and four movies, but all the movies are at the top of the list. One, so two, three, okay, I have four movies, so similar. Wait, did you put them in actual order, one to ten. I did. Oh, ooh. Can you do that? Oh, that's so hard. I can do it a little song and dance while you're numbering. Right. Because I will. I will just. I'm gonna wing it. I'm just. Gonna, okay. I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna go with it. That's all. Well, so what It'll we're be going my to... first impulse. 
Yes. So what we're going to do, though, just to mess with your mind, is we're going to count backwards. So we're going to go with your least favorite on the list. That'll be number 10. Does I mean, we loved it, obviously, because it made the list. But because we want to build up momentum. We want people to be excited <laughs> about what our number one is. If you by, the way, fence. by the way, Christina, we see you are here. Hi. Yeah, also, I can't see. Okay, we really have to figure this out because I can't see any comments. It's showing me zero people. So I'm sad. Um, okay. Well, I'm showing, I'm showing you, Pedro. zero viewers and one reaction. Um, if you guys... I, you know what? I've done this before and it was more intuitive. So anyway, um, we're, we're, that's fine. This, fine. We don't mind. We don't mind if we just have a conversation no. with ourselves. And we can, okay. and like I said, we can put it on YouTube after. So we should just start. Yeah. Right. So we should just shut up and go. Great. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to kick it off with my number 10, top 10 TV and movies of the year. I'm going to start with number 10. Okay. Okay. I picked, I think you're going to be surprised, Lost in Space. Oh, I am surprised. Okay. Because, because I thought about it and, you know, it wasn't a show that made me go, oh my God, it's fantastic. You have to watch it. But it, but it was just a show that, that it was a little slow to get into and a bunch of like, oh, come on. But by the end, like I was really into it. I mean, yeah. Yes, I think we talked about it on our podcast and we rolled yeah. our eyes at a yeah. bunch of the different parts, like the dad floating in space and so on. But like, I was really into it. I, I thought it was more fun. I, I, you know, it's, it didn't make my top 10. I did like okay. it, but I almost felt the opposite. Surprise, surprise. I felt the opposite of you that by the end, I was kind of like, eh, like I wasn't like dying to see more. Yeah, I, um, I'm looking forward to it coming back. Yeah. Okay. All right, so okay. Pick a 10, to pick a number 10 for you. Okay, my number 10 is going to be A Quiet Place, the movie. Mm. Um, I was very affected by that. I thought it was innovative. And I think that's kind of a theme for me this year. Things that are different, things that are innovative in entertainment. So A Quiet Place is my number 10. And you did not- Howard here. Sorry, Howard, Howard commented, yes, Lost in Space. Not that Lost in Space. The Lost in Space reboot on Netflix. I probably should have clarified that. Oh. Okay, so that was my number 10. Shannon's number 10 is A Quiet Place. Quiet. Sorry, I didn't, yeah. didn't mean to cut you off. Yep. You, did you see that, A Quiet Place? I did. Okay, okay. I was, I, I was hoping for more. It just fell a little flat for me. I liked the idea. Okay. Um, it sort of had a Walking Dead vibe for me you know because it, you know it's like it's about survival I guess it is but I just you know I'm gonna be honest the, the ending I just and and like for god's sakes don't get pregnant if you can't get found, <laughs> right okay okay um Howard liked a quiet place he thought it was a great movie so can I move on no, to my number nine it, it might I just want to make a comment it could be very hard to find prophylactics when you can't talk or move around very well so you can't be like hey you got a condom <laughs> right right so you could, you could do hand gestures but we won't <laughs> yeah. uh howard's at the doctor's office howard i hope you have headphones because yeah. <laughs> otherwise it's gonna be kind of weird all right next up so number nine for me um, this, I got to give a shout out to Gwen. Gwen was the one that inspired our British TV challenge yes. where we discovered a ton of good new content. And, and there were a lot of shows that I liked, a lot of shows that you liked, but the one that was kind of a standout for me, and I don't know why I haven't watched the second season, but I fell in love with Happy Valley because right. it's a detective show and it's set in, I think, Yorkshire, which is the Northern part of England. And, you know, as a stupid American, I just assumed that everything in England is in London. And um, I kind of um, I kind of love that this showed a different side of England. And um, I, just the acting was excellent. You know, what I love about British shows, no offense, Britain, but, um, <laughs> but their actors don't have to be beautiful. Do you know what I mean? Yes. I mean, it was about- it's Pretty much like that everywhere in the world, except here, I think. Right. I mean, it was like a middle-aged divorce detective. Yeah. No, she, I don't even think she was a detective. I think she was a sergeant. Anyway, I liked it. What's your number nine? I'm going to go with The Good Place. 
Uh, okay, you talk, then I'll say something. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. I think a lot of people okay. have seen this because it's on network TV. It's on NBC. Um, you know, it stars Kristen Bell and Ted Danson. And it's funny and intelligent and fast. And, you know, it's one of those shows that you really don't ever zone out when you watch it. You're paying attention and you're laughing. And I haven't enjoyed a sitcom like this in many, many, many years. So that definitely makes my Confess time. Sometimes I zone out, I, but I did consider it for this list. If you guys listen to the podcast, you know that we are both, um, we're both, oh, Howard's chiming in. No one else is in, in the doctor's office. And he thinks Emily Blunt may get a nomination for that bathtub birth scene. Oh, I know. <laughs> um, okay. Her sister was in Downton Place, Downtown Place, or do you mean Downton Abbey? Downton. I think he's, talk he's, talk he's talking about ha Happy Valley. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was in um, Downton Abbey. That's okay. I know exactly who you're talking about. She played um, uh, O'Brien. Yes, the maid. We talked about that. Um, yeah, that was a great, that was a great show. Okay, uh, we are moving. So the only reason I didn't include Good Place, I thought about it, and it's because I really enjoyed season one the best. Okay. Season two oh. was good. We're on to season three now, aren't we? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, season one was definitely the best. Yeah. Season two was good. Yeah. Season three started out slow, but now I think it got really good again. So we're getting there. We're yeah. getting there. Yeah. This and right again, this goes along with the rule. This goes along with the rule of like when you watched it. So okay. I mean, I watched a lot of the good plays this year, even though it has been out for a couple of years. So. Howard said the evil maid O'Brien. Yep, I got it. All right, moving on to number eight. I have a choice that I can 100% guarantee did not make Shannon's list. And that is a Netflix true crime documentary. <laughs> She's out called The Staircase. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I probably because I was living in North Carolina, so I felt sort of like a personal connection to the case. This is, um, shit, what's his name? Um, anyway, the, the, the novelist that supposedly murdered his wife, Catherine, Michael Peterson, Michael Peterson. Okay. And it was just, I mean, this was over like 15 years. And it just, what I said, and when we talked about this on our podcast, what I loved about this is, the story's great. The story's interesting. Is he guilty? Is he not guilty? I don't know. What makes it really interesting for someone like me is it's a really in-depth look at the legal process, which I find fascinating. So right. that's right. my number eight. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with Avengers Infinity War for my number eight. Okay. Yeah. Um, great movie. But as you know, and anybody who listened to our podcast, I was a little disappointed and, um, you know, it's in my top 10, but it's low, low on the list. So that's you my number handle, eight. You couldn't handle Loki dying. No, that's, that's it. not it. I like dying. You know, I like dying. <laughs> I, like, I like everybody to Heaven's die. Heaven's into violence. What I had a problem with is that they're not all really dead. It's completely unrealistic that all of those Avengers are dead. They will obviously come back. There are more movies in the works. So it was just, it just left me with a feeling of like, this is stupid. So, you know, I mean, the movie itself was great until the end. Okay. Yeah. All right. I have a feeling there will be more discussion about that on this. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. I'm, just, I'm, moving, I'm moving my list around. That's why I'm looking away because I want to make okay. sure I, I didn't you, order them. So, okay. You look away while I talk it's because... Happening. Um, if you guys don't know, first of all, we do a biweekly podcast called Stinger. I'm, I have an itch. I'm not picking my nose. Called Stinger. It's uh, where we talk about TV and movies. Really what we're watching or if there's something like hot or interesting, we'll dive a little bit deep. But this year we launched two additional podcasts. And I say that because that's going to come into play. Three? Three! 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 Okay. Yeah, um, four total. Yes. So the, my number seven on the list is going to be Homecoming. Okay. So this, this is an Amazon Prime original starring Julia Roberts. It's a 10-episode, half-hour show. 
that is based on the audio podcast of the same name. Our podcast about the show is called the homecoming initiative. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like really hesitant about this because I love the podcast and I wasn't sure that it was going to translate well to the, the screen and the small screen. And I don't like Julia Roberts. <laughs> All that said, I thought Julia Roberts did a fantastic mm -hmm. job she acting. Did. We absolutely adored her lead, whose name I can't remember. What's his name? Stefan something? I suck at remembering names. I know. I know. But, uh, anyway. But he, he, yes, we definitely adored him. Adored is a great word. We adored him. But um, the, uh, the biggest shout out goes to another name I can't remember. Sam, the guy that, that uh, the, the, the director. Oh, yeah, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> We're so prepared, you guys. We're so prepared. You guys, um, Google it. Okay, we know what we're talking about. We just can't remember the names. We'll, Sam, put, it all, we'll put it all in a blog post and make right. it pretty. Yeah, he. so he was the director, and I thought he did really some phenomenal um, just – directing choices we and and on our podcast we talk a lot about symbolism we talk a lot about camera angles and um sound and it was just a really creative piece Definitely. how it's homecoming he thought was puzzling but ultimately satisfying i think that's a really good way to put it because there is a season two but we felt at the end of season season one we felt like you said satisfied yeah not, yeah. not all questions were answered but it was satisfied while you tell us your number seven, I'm going to look up that director's name because it's driving yeah, me. Yeah, I will just I will just say that that didn't make my top ten, but it was very very close. It it it, okay. it got it got edged out um, by well, I have a questionable choice on my list because Sam I just Esmail. started just Sam started Esmail. watching. Okay, <laughs> Sam Esmail. You know what? I was going to say Ishmael, and I'm like, no, that's like a Bible name. So I was hey, so close. I got the Sam part right. All right. Yes. What is your anyway, questionable number okay. seven? My number seven is going to be Eighth Grade, the movie. Why is that questionable? No, no, no. That's not the one that's questionable. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. I got I off track. I'm saying the one, the one I picked that edged out Homecoming. Homecoming. Okay. It's questionable. I'll go into that more next, but it's eighth grade is my number. Right. Eighth grade is my number seven pick. Um, it was kind of a sleeper movie. It didn't come out in a lot of theaters. It was over the summer about uh, a girl who's in eighth grade, and I brought my daughter, who is just that age, and I mean, the whole time she was sitting next to me, she was you know cringing and making all the faces and the laughing and the tears and and just saying that that is exactly how kids her age feel. And just the experience of the two of us seeing that together and the girl that stars in it was phenomenal. The way she pulled off the, you know, the cringiness actually, you know, she right. was just, she killed it. And it is streaming now somewhere. So if you didn't get a chance oh, to see it in the theater, definitely go, definitely look it up. Yeah, That was when I really, really when we did our summer movie preview, yes. that was one that I really wanted to see yeah. and it just wasn't widely playing or I didn't right. have time or um, I know I shouldn't do this while we're talking, but no, I, I want to, I want to see where it's streaming. Okay. Actually you can rent it on Amazon, YouTube, um, Fandango now. Oh, it's, so it's still renter. Okay. Yeah. But it's 99 cents. Oh, well, all right. That's cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I might watch that this weekend. Yes. All right. Moving on to number six. Speaking of podcasts that we produce, mm -hmm. there is there is another podcast that we do called Ozark's Dirty Laundry. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay. It's been a while since we recorded, so I want to make sure I had the name right. Uh, Ozark. We love Ozark. And when the second season came out, we totally binged it like it was our job because it was. And we took yeah. notes and <laughs> analyzed every episode. And we just, you know, we got down and dirty. And yeah, we sunk in deep on that. It was it was. Yeah. So fun. I loved it. I thought it was so fun to do that. It's a great show. Like if you're into character analysis, it's a great show to really just kind of 
you know, discuss and pick apart. And what we did on our, our podcast is every episode we talked about the moral dilemma of the episode and what would you do? And um, we decided that pretty much the whole show is a moral dilemma. <laughs> yes. Sure. And, and their morals aren't very high. So, all right. So my number six was Ozark. Your number six. Uh, my number six is the one I was just talking about that was kind of my debatable Killing Eve. Now, I just started oh. watching this, but it's been out for a while and it is amazing. It is amazing. OK, and I can't stop watching it. I'm going to watch it as soon as I'm done here. So I had to bump I had to bump Homecoming for that one. I have to give a little shout out to my friend Ellen, who is not watching, but maybe someday Ellen will watch because, um, you know, people know that we do a lot of movie and TV. So I, I get people that are like, oh, you should, they'll send me messages. You should watch this. For months, she's been telling me to watch Killing Eve. Months. And I haven't done it, but I hear it's, great things about it. So, yeah. I mean, I didn't know what to expect from it. You know, it's one of those shows where you look, you know, like, I don't know if everybody else does this, but I look at the, the poster, you know, the, the, TV show or the movie poster, the artwork and the title, and I make an assumption. And, you know, the artwork for this show is uh, Sandra O oh from Grey's Anatomy, who's great. Right. And this well, other girl, have, her aunt, what? Does she have a British accent in the show? She does not in the show. Okay. Because it's a British show, right? It is. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and she's, yeah, she's like from Chicago in the show or something like that. But, and then in the picture, there's another, another girl, the other girl who's, I don't know her name, but you know, with her arm around her neck, you know, and I'm thinking my assumption was like, I don't know, possibly a lesbian thing. I was thinking for some reason, orange is the new black. That was kind of what the vibe I was thinking that this show was going to be. And it's a crime show, isn't it? It is. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's what I get for, you know, judging a book by its cover. Cause that's really what I did. I looked at it and I was like, oh, I don't know, but sure. it is. Yeah. It's a, it's a crime drama and it's funny too, which I love it when they can inject a little humor and Sandra O's amazing. And I'm just, I'm really, really enjoying it. So that's my number six. By the way, speaking of judging a, a show by its cover, I, for years, Happy Valley was recommended to me by Netflix. And I'm like, what is this stupid show? <laughs> right, and right. I just ignored it. So I'm glad I watched it. By the way, o uh, Ozark. I almost called you Ozark. Howard has been chiming in. <laughs> and I, <laughs> Ozark's been chiming in. Howard's been chiming in. And we've just been so into our discussion that I ignored his comments. So um, Howard was talking about, uh, he said, it was good, but I like the edge of 17 better. So I'm thinking that, Comment is in reference to eighth grade. Right. I, I haven't seen Edge of Seventeen. I didn't either. I didn't either. But that was also supposed to be a pretty good movie. And then he said Ozark should get awarded for the three leads and the show. Three leads. I'm I'm guessing um, Wendy, uh, Marty, Ruth, and Marty. I was like, what is Marty's yes. name? You guys. Yes. This is what age does to you. <laughs> no, it well, do Golden Globes. Hey, guys, it doesn't Golden do. Globes. Yes it, yes, it messes up your brain. That's what it does. I actually heard that the older you get, uh, the first thing to leave your brain is proper names. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, I've been, uh, I've been with that forever. I know. Okay. Uh, but the Golden Globes are this weekend on Sunday night. And yeah. uh, a lot, Ozark's nominated for a lot, so. And I'll be at dinner with a relative, so I don't know that I will necessarily watch it. I know. I know. Okay. Uh, that, that is our first half, you guys. And it's 426. We're doing pretty good for us. I mean, for us. Okay. So I have one more TV show. This is number five. If you're just joining or joining in late, this is our top 10 list, top 10 things, TVs and movies that, did I say TVs? TVs. <laughs> TV shows. TV shows. And movies from 2018, and we're kind of sort of doing it in order. We're counting down from number 10. Why don't we do a quick recap? So my ten, my number 10 was Lost in Space, number 9, Happy Valley, number 8, The Staircase, number 7, Homecoming, and number 6, Ozark. Uh, my number 10 was A Quiet Place, 9 was The Good Place, 8 was Avengers Infinity War, 
seven was eighth grade, and six was Killing Eve. Okay. Now we're on to our top five. So we have like no crossovers so far, right? I don't know. Maybe. So I mean, so far. Right. So far we have, we don't. Okay. So my number five, if you are a huge fan of the podcast, which I hope you are, this next one will come as no surprise to you. It is the dearly departed show, The Crossing. No, are you kidding? I still miss that show. You love that so much that it made your top 10 for the whole year. It made, really? Look, yes. I liked that show. It was, there aren't many shows that I'm like, ooh, do we have another episode? Okay. Right? Okay. And actually, it's making me think I should, probably should have included, that's how I felt about the first season of uh, Marvel's Runaways. Okay. Okay. Oh. I, no, I, I, liked, I liked both of those shows. They just wouldn't, okay. they wouldn't even enter into the top 20 probably for me. They were good, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, the Crossing, by the way, was a sci-fi show on ABC starring C Steve Zahn, and I loved it. And uh, it was only on for half a season, and ABC was like, we're canceling it. And I was like, screw you, ABC. <laughs> All right. She was Shannon, very bitter about it for a Let's very not long time. visit old wounds. Number five for you. All right. My number five is Black Panther. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, everybody's, I figure everybody's seen Black Panther. There's not much more I could say about it. It was an excellent movie. I oh, it. damn it. I just remembered um, when I forgot. That's okay. I'm going to make a switch. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm going to have to make a quick switch. That I'll, I'll make that one an honorable mention. All right. Well, make a, make a quick switch because I have nothing else to say. I mean, you know, okay. Black Panther was an awesome movie. It was nonstop action. The acting was great. The story was great. Um, I don't think I had a bad thing to say about that Black Panther. Okay. So then uh, let's move on to number four. Okay. Which was the movie I did not expect to like. I went in with very, so I, I've switched to movies now. Went in with very low expectations and I absolutely loved Solo. Oh gosh. Yeah. I, no, no. You didn't love Solo? <laughs> I definitely didn't love it. No. Oh, I loved that movie. I thought it, I really thought it was good. I thought it was well done. It made me wish that they would stop making the trilogy movies and just do the standalone movies because the other ones kind of suck. But yeah, no. So I stand by my number four spot for Solo. Man, we are like such opposites. I mean, I, I don't, you know, again, I liked it. It was fun but I thought it was really unnecessary. And Go ahead. I'm waiting to hear yours so I can make faces at your choices. Awesome. Oh, you can't make faces at my choice. Number four is dark. You love that as much as I did. I forgot <laughs> about dark. I did. I forgot about dark. <laughs> this is good. a Netflix original, and it was, you have to watch it either dubbed or subtitled because it's, at, where is it from? Sweden? Is it Swedish? Germany. Germany. Okay. The other one, the rain was Swedish. Oh, Swedish. Okay. Um, okay. No, German. Danish. Anyway, okay. one of those countries. Um, Dark is a German Netflix original and just so mind bending and puzzling. And you need like, I think you actually made a flow chart on your I website, did. didn't you? To, to talk about it. It, it was just beautiful. I can't All believe different it. families because it was so hard to keep track of the future and the past and the present and everything else. I forgot about that show. Yeah. Hmm. I can't wait for it to come out. I'm thinking, I mean, it came out early, either late 2017 or early 2018 it was out because we talked about it on the podcast very early in 2017, 2018. So... Maybe we need to start another podcast. It, it might be it might be time for another season of that soon. I hope. Yeah, I, I definitely need to rewatch that show. Definitely, I've only watched it once, and I know I'd get a lot more if I watched it. Again. Oh yeah, if if they announce another season coming soon, I'm gonna watch it again too. Right, because you really have to think about that one. Okay. Like, very good. That's my number four. Okay. Okay. Well, my number. I made I made some last minute switches. Okay. So my number three, I'm going to make um, Black Panther. Okay. So I thought that was, that was a good, that 
you know, it wasn't a movie that made you think, but it was just, it was like this, this nicely packaged superhero. Um, but it just, I don't know. I just felt good after that movie. I felt yeah. happy after yeah. that movie. Yeah. I just liked it. And I liked and the I acting. Thought it fit really well into the Marvel universe too. Um, I, I mean, see, I've, and that movie was really a standalone story, wasn't it? Yes, but I, th that's kind of what I mean. Is like it wasn't yeah. it wasn't super interconnected that you needed to oh, see right. everything else. Like it was just it's nice little, like you said, a nice little package, right. and it just right. fit in really well, and it didn't mess with anything else, kind of. And I wasn't really expecting to love that movie. I thought it would be good, but I really loved it. I thought it was really good. So that good. that made my number three. On to you. Okay. My number three is The Haunting of Hill House. Forgot about that one too. Yeah. That was, you know, I think there were so many good thinkers out this year. You know, Dark was a thinker. Ozark is kind of a thinker. Um, Haunting of Hill House, my, my number one when we get to it is a big thinker. But I like the shows where you're just not quite sure what's going on for a while and you need to puzzle it out and you know maybe there's a twist maybe there's not I mean there wasn't like a huge twist at the end of right. this, anything but um it, it was and it was beautifully filmed and the actors were excellent the actors were good now Shannon and I are actually planning on discussing this in, in an upcoming podcast episode so we haven't really gone deep yet because there were a couple things about it that I didn't that didn't sit well with me, but I did watch the whole thing, even though I was scared and you're right. It was really well done. I don't know. I could definitely see that lower down on my top 10 list. Like maybe that would have bumped lost in space, but I don't know, but it was good. Okay. Okay. So number two, I'm going to go with a movie that I actually just saw which is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, you know, this is making a ton of people's top 10 lists. I, I just, I had no interest in seeing this, but everyone's saying how good it is. So maybe I will. So my son, Evan, he's 11, didn't want to see it. And I'm like, why would you not want to see it? Like, it, it reminds me of everything about Spider-Man that I love. And there's humor, but it's not too like campy corny, which I can't stand when it's like, let me spoon feed humor to you and make you laugh. I mean, it's just like, it's everything I love in a movie. It's good writing. It's, I mean, it's, it's animated, but it's really clever animation. It's just, it's true to the characters. I just... I can't say enough good things about it. I just, I, I loved it. And I'm not saying it's a movie for everybody, but you know, I looked it up and Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 98%. I was like, wow, that is, that is significant. And you know me, I find something wrong with every movie. Right. You are. I, I cannot, I cannot tell you one thing like, well, I kind of wish they, nope, I cannot come up with a single thing for this movie. Wow. Okay, well, I think I need to see it then. Yeah. Maybe you do. <laughs> your, son, your son would like it. Go with your son. Yeah, yeah. I could do that, sure. He's very busy. He doesn't like to do things with me so much anymore. He's, I mean, he's, uh, I, he's 20. I get it. I get it. He wants to see it with his friends, but. I get it. Um, all right, so that was your number two? That was my number two. Okay, my number two is Ozark. So a little, that was uh, one we both have in common, but I put it a little higher on the list. And yeah. We've already, I guess we've already talked about that, but I love it. Okay. Ozark, number two. And now, drum roll, right? Ah, we're doing the same thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> number one, my number one piece of entertainment for the year Avengers Infinity War. Okay. Number right. one. Best and thing you've seen this year. Okay. Best thing. I think a lot of people would say that. I think a lot of people would say that. Let me and let me tell you why. Because um I don't love every single character in the Marvel universe. Um but what I liked about this, 
think of how hard it is to create a movie with all of these characters. And I felt like each character stayed true to who they are, who they have been, you know, evolved to be in this universe. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing that I thought was so brilliant about this movie was the pairings, the, how we have Peter Quill um, from Guardians of the Galaxy that was matched, up, yes. matched up with Thor. And then we have Doctor Strange and his humongous ego matched up with the humongous ego of Tony Stark. Right. And I, I mean, just putting, making all those characters fit, I just thought was so brilliantly done. And the ending, of, the ending of the movie, I, I'm not even kidding. I just gave myself goosebumps thinking about it. It just, it was so like, I don't want to say emotional, but it just kind of took the wind out of you when you're like, <gasps> it, that's true. That's true. So, yeah. I mean, if you can suspend your like, oh, come on, they can't all really be dead right. because that would be the end of, right. Exactly. But, but taking it at face value, I thought it was fantastic. And Santa might have even brought me a 4K Blu-ray DVD of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I agree. I mean, I, I don't want to make it sound like I did not like that movie because it was brilliantly done. It was beautiful right. and everything you said. But, you know, I just had such an issue with the end. Like I said, if I could just, you know, sp suspend my thoughts about the end, right. Right. I would have put it much higher on my list. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so inquiring minds, minds, yes, inquiring minds want to know. Castle Rock. Forgot, <laughs> forgot about all these shows that we watched. <laughs> Dude, I'm that sure that would have made your list. I'm sure that would have made your list. Yeah, uh, I, that, that, yes, that definitely should have made my list. Yeah, so Castle Rock <laughs> is a Hulu original, and it is about... It, you know, it takes place in the city of Castle Rock, which is in the Stephen King universe and very cleverly weaves in a lot of Stephen King references. So if you like Stephen King, you will love it. And also just, again, one of those mind bending shows and still yeah. it's still debatable what the end was about. And they say it's an anthology. So next season is going to be completely different, right. which kind of upsets me because I don't feel like I got a good ending, but that show was so well done that I'm okay with just believing what I think and not having it spoon fed to me, as you said. I have to admit, I sort of like packaged up endings, even if it's like a little ambiguous, but there's an end. And I just didn't feel like we got an end for that one. Now, yeah, that's, was, not, know. that's not to say that that's why it didn't make, make my list. It didn't make my list because I forgot about it, but <laughs> I, really, I did really enjoy that show. And if you guys listen to the podcast, we actually spent, I think, a good two episodes of our podcast talking yes. about a bunch of the Castle Rock episodes. And we, we talked about, oh, I forgot to tell you this. Guess what I got my husband for Christmas? What? The chess set from Castle Rock. <gasps> no way you can buy that. Yes. Oh, I want to see it. You got to post a picture. I will. I will. That's I will. Very cool. I'll post it on our Instagram. That's I keep, I, yeah, I keep meaning to tell you that, but um, yeah, nice. cause he's a huge chess lover and I got it from this guy in England and he was like, yeah, we didn't expect this chess set to be this popular this year. And I, I just want to be like, you know, it was in Castle Rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm going to recap my top five and Shannon will recap hers and then we will call it a night. So for me, the top five, The Crossing, the short-lived series on ABC, Solo, the standalone Star Wars movie, Story of a Han Solo, Black Panther, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and my number one for 2018 was Avengers Infinity War. Okay. Uh, my number five was Black Panther. Number four was Dark. Number three was Haunting of Hill House. Two was Ozark. And one was Castle Rock. So my top four are all like wacky, crazy dramas. There, was a, lot, there was a lot of good stuff this year, wasn't it? There yep. really was. Yep. Yep. And we have a lot to look forward to for 2019. Yeah. So um, if you want to read any of our recaps or um, just look at some some of what we're doing, look at our different podcasts, you can go to stingeruniverse.com. That is our universe of all of our content. It includes links to our podcasts, our show notes. It includes um, things that we're writing about in the entertainment field. And um, 
it will allow you to link to our YouTube channel where you can see more of our lovely faces. That's right. That's right. All right. All right. Let's, Thank let's you wrap it up. everyone for watching. And here's to good content, maybe better content in 2019. If we missed one of your favorites, please leave us a comment. We'd love to hear what you think. Bye, everybody. See ya.